the uh, motiva uh, motivation. And then uh, I will give example of using planner, uh, CABTBT uh, and uh, uh, to modify the uh, uh, photo detector and then also bulk hydrojunction of the same material and then uh, uh, molly oxide. Uh, this perovskite material actually as uh, material first being noticed by its uh, performance in solar cells in within a decade. Is, uh, um, um, efficiency increased from about just about a few percent up to about uh, twenty-five point seven percent, and is almost to the uh, theoretical limit of thirty-one percent. So this material has raised attention of uh, uh, research community and many different types of devices made with this material. For example, uh, young also solar cells, also electric diode and uh, field fact transistors and lasers. And then particular, uh, I'm, going, I'm going to talk about uh, photo detectors based on perovskite. Uh, Proside actually is a crystal structure. And to make it simple, it's just a cubic, uh, for example, with lead at the center, and then an eight corner with metal ammonium, and then uh, then uh, six uh, phase center, if uh, iodine, for example, in this uh, particular material. And so MA PVI3. And it has four exceptional properties, such as more cheap to produce, and you have the ability of the band gap to fit your application uh, by changing materials, and most remarkably, the excellent efficiency. And there are also challenges in this material, especially in stability and toxicity. And uh, to solve that, uh, a surface interface modification is very important. Uh, measure. And about CABDBT is again a material and so far enjoyed the highest uh, mobility, electrical mobility, and it's comparable to polycrystalline uh, with the so called uh, um, off center spin coating. So we put this CABDBT on. Uh, metal ammonium lead iodide and uh, the device structures like this and uh, with perovskite on the substrate and then put on top of it the CABDBT and if you look at the uh, uh, the uh, surface morphology and that's more little change because you look at the thickness and uh, on top of 300 nanometer uh, uh, Proskai, we have about uh, about 20 nanometer of C8 BTBT. The uh, optical absorption is, uh, curve here is really dominated by the Proskai. And uh, as CABT BT has pretty uh, uh, wide band gap, so only at these uh, uh, um, low wavelength uh, modification. And we'll use photo emission spectroscopy to look at surface structure, electronic structure. And this is uh, ultraviolet photo emission spectroscopy uh, uh, used to uh, investigate the uh, uh, topmost electronic structure. Uh, here is the uh, valence band, and we can see uh, these uh, perovskite the valence band is about 1.66 EV, and putting on these. Uh, C8BTBT, the uh, uh, homo of C8BTBT is really aligned with the uh, valence band maximum. So this is good because we want to have the charge to go through from one material to the other unhindered. And so energy level alignment, here's the key here, and it's very nice in, in this case. Um, we can also look at deep pore levels and look at what's really going on in this interface. In this case, we use X-ray photo emission spectroscopy to look at deep core level. And here's a lab and iodine. 
and nitrogen, uh, all three are in this uh, 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 process guide. And we can see there's no change. So there's no reaction, no energy level shift. All right, there's no charge transfer. And we can also look at carbon and carbon is gradually overtaken uh, from proskite to C8BTBT. And then we look at sulfur and then uh, sulfur is in C8BTBT and on the top layer, uh, we see some broadening and as the thickness increases. Uh, there are a little bit shift of the energy level at the top, but uh, that's more likely due to with the charging because uh, CABTBT here uh, is really uh, standing up on Pravzakai. And uh, uh, this type of uh, organic material is, 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 uh, uh, is uh, um, uh, conjugate material and has very anastropic uh, conductivity. And on top of this, uh, CABDBT, we then put on gold as having a device. And we do that by growing CABDB layer by layer from very thin, from uh, uh, about uh, uh, one inch on gold, and we keep increasing. And initially, what we see is the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, some energy level shift to the lower kinetic energy side. And this is because when you put just gold on it, it forms clusters. And then the clusters are highly photoionizing, so causing local charge. And this uh, cluster induced ionization has been quenched by the formation of metallic layer. When you see the, the, uh, uh, the uh, Fermi level at this energy level, Fermi level, it forms about eight angstrom gold. That means all the clusters coalesce and forming conductive layer, and then there's no charging anymore. If you look at the, uh, the uh, what happened underneath gold, then we can again use our XPS to look deeper. And here is the, uh, you see a Latin iodine core levels, that is prophesied, which shift the lower binary binding energy by about three um, EV. That means everybody moves upward. And, um, um, and then uh, uh, on the other hand, we can also see there's a new peak of a lead appears, which actually is due to metallic lead. All right, so what tells us is uh, these uh, uh, after putting gold on top of these two layer system, and actually Prof. Sky got a uh, little bit decomposed. We actually have studied putting gold direct on Prof. Sky. There's no such a reaction. So this reaction is um, catalyzed by uh, CABTBT in this case. It's limited, but existing. And um, we can also look at uh, other materials, for example, uh, look at the carbon, you do see BDBT on sulfur, and we see also uh, uh, these uh, uh, shift to a lower band energy by one EV. So that's in addition to about 0.3 EV shift in the, in the uh, prioritized substrate. And putting this all together, and we can get energy level diagram. And this is just putting C8BTBT on Propskite, practically leveled. And then we have a, a very nice energy level alignment between uh, the home of C8BTBT and a Propskite. And after putting gold, and then we lift all the energy level up at interface. And about 0.3 EV in Propskite, about 1 EV minus 0.3, 0.7 EV in the uh, uh, CABDBT, and all of this will encourage whole to accumulate once you have whole electron pair generated by photons. Uh, so this whole accumulation uh, and actually improved the uh, uh, detector efficiency. 
And here is an example of these photo detectors, CABDBT and perovskite photo detector, which shows or a high uh, 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 photo current and dark current ratio is about 10 to the fifth. And with CABDBT, the photo current increased by two order of magnitude. Okay, it shows here. And the responsivity is about 57 uh, times improvement. And uh, again, also detectivity, uh, the activity also improves about 200 times, 250 times. And um, uh, here, um, the uh, not only improved efficiency, but also improved the stability. Here is the on off. Uh, you can see the reproducibility and light on, light off as far as reproducible. And here, uh, this shows the photo current. Without these uh, CABDBD, the, the uh, device just drop quickly, uh, more small, uh, but, uh, um, uh, but, uh, but uh, uh, um, this photo current was more stable and then, uh, and, um, these uh, um, uh, uh, these uh, rise time for these uh, um, uh, CABDB modified uh, devices uh, increase fast and uh, uh, decay fast uh, compared with that without, and then uh, <laughs> without it, it will raise about uh, uh, almost eight times slower. And the uh, uh, current, uh, these uh, light and dark current ratio uh, will be remain 90% in 20 days in ambient. And uh, we can also check the uh, um, uh, photoluminescence light time, which indicate how many uh, defects uh, in the uh, material. And if there's a lot of defect, then photoluminescence will be quickly quenched by the uh, uh, defect, and then you see a very quick uh, decay of the photoluminescence, which is when you don't have the uh, CABDBT on top, and with CABDBT, uh, it, it double the decay time. So, so it really just passivate the surface. And so the, we see that there's good energy level alignment, there's encouragement to accumulate holes on the surface. So we have efficiency improvement and then sequential the defect. And such effect can also be seen with bulk hydrojunction. <laughs> the bulk hydrojunction formed by using this perovskite um, uh, nano, nano wires. And uh, here um, uh, we just have these nano wires and on top we just Put on CABDVT and then uh, and then uh, uh, here the improvement is is there but less significant. All right, but only ten times rather than two hundred times, for example. And here, of course, what we remove is these a whole accumulation by those layer structure. So we can see that uh, uh, it build up potential here has an effect. And again, the device. Uh, uh, um, uh, stability improvement is shown there. And we also try another material. Here is multi-oxide on FAMAPD I3. Okay, in this case, uh, we can see that uh, from the valence band, there's no energy level alignment. There's about one EV energy gap. All right. And um, uh, we also see that uh, uh, these uh, um, uh, p doping of the uh, perovskite by multi-oxide. When do p doping, then and you level move up and then whole accumulated. Uh, so here's a picture that uh, uh, what happened when you have that uh, um, doping effect, and then you generate this and you level uh, shift building potential, and then you accumulate these holes and then increase the photo current. And um, the, uh, here the improvement device performance is there, uh, it's not as significant as CABDBT, but it's also there. 
So uh, that's the uh, improvement by factor three uh, here rather than 53, 57. So in conclusion, and yes, interface modification can dramatically improve the material, uh, the uh, device performance. And here are the numbers. And then we see that uh, these uh, surface modification uh, have several factors which can improve device performance, including energy level alignment and including connectivity, include building potential and passivation. They all contribute and each one contribute its own way. And we can do different type hydrojunction and, and then we can delineate the contribution of each. And um, I like knowledge in my colleagues and at Central South University in China and um, Professor Junyang Ye, Professor Dong Mei Niu and Professor Xiao Liang Liu and then my student in University of Rochester. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, Professor Gao. A question. Uh, Professor Gao, uh, you uh, pointed out that one of the interesting uh, things of, among many uh, is that uh, you, have, uh, you mentioned that some of the lead is uh, becomes uh, metallic lead. Yeah. So I was wondering, uh, it, uh, by this do you mean it's becoming uh, zero valent or it's forming a separate phase or is it uh, being reduced and incorporated in the gold, or what do you think? Very good question. Yeah, uh, this means that uh, the uh, perovskite has somewhat decomposed, and so lead has been released from the perovskite in this two plus state into zero, so just zero valence state, as you mentioned. Yeah, and uh, then in uh, XPS, it can be easily distinguished. So would you uh, speculate on the size of the zero valence state? Is it a uh, or sure, a yeah, it's, well, the size we cannot really determine quite easy with the current uh, uh, approaches, but the, uh, the uh, fraction, we can do that very easily just by looking at the uh, peak uh, area of prosthite lab and then metallic lab. Any other question? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. I can turn over to my collaborator, Professor Calabri, who uh, uh, moderate the rest of the session. And now let's move on with the uh, next speaker, Madeleine Kugadena uh, from the University of the Basque Country. 